Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have quite a bit of news and kind of some somewhat bad news as well when it comes to the Xbox and also Windows, where they actually have had a massive, massive loss and actually are not really doing too, too hot. We have quite a few different things to go and talk about over here. And granted, I mean, a lot of these places are still churning out a lot of money and doing Overall, I'd say pretty good. The one that I think of bigger issues over here right now is the fact that the Xbox is, well, not doing the best. So we're going to go talk about this, talk about do a little bit of a deep dive on the analytics because they are all brand new. And, well, let's go talk about it. As well, if any of you guys are brand new, make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well to keep on checking out on that Howl link down below for the brand new Samsung signups, brand new Samsung hookups. You get $200 for free in terms of trainings and all that. Link down below. We have the Twitter and Twitch stream if you all want to follow. We'd we'll love to have you guys down there. And, of course, all the usual other sell it links with Amazon and Target down below. So this one's a little bit of a tricky one to go and talk about. We actually now have an article over here from The Verge, and it's kind of been making its way all around the financial side. Mainly, as you guys know, Microsoft is one of the bigger companies out there and has some of the bigger trajectories and, well, bigger market caps when it comes to money. And this headline, as you guys can tell, and the numbers as well, are not looking too good. So the Xbox and Windows fall in Microsoft's $51.9 billion quarter. Surface is up. Xbox is down and Windows is struggling now with chip shortages too as well. So Microsoft posted its fourth quarter of its 2022 financial results today, reporting revenue now, which first and foremost, a revenue of 52 billion and a net income of 16.7 billion is phenomenal. That just means that they're printing money, that their quarter was doing fantastic, and at the end of the day, they were kind of churning, boys. They were kind of churning. The revenue is up 12%. The net income has increased by just only 2%. And while revenue was up, Microsoft saw some of its core businesses, and these are like the big hitters that you guys probably care about, Windows and Xbox actually started to go and have a slip. The PC market has been thriving throughout the pandemic, but PC shipments experienced a big decline just in this past recent quarter. Nearly 13% according to Gautner. And it's the sharpest decline in over nine years as well, thanks to geopolitical tensions, inflation, and of course, the usual thing we've been talking about forever, the continued supply chain shortage. And of course, obviously, you have all these kind of big issues. Those do also affect up Xbox. If you can't make the consoles, issues with that. You guys can have to make a little bit less money in terms of all those regards. I'll tie with that in terms of tensions and regards of that. So Microsoft's Windows OEM revenue, the price PC manufacturers pay Microsoft to put Windows on machines, actually fell 2% in quarter four. So once again, not that good because you're now losing more revenue. This is also driven by what Microsoft describes as production shutdowns and a, de a deteriorating PC market. That also kind of times into a little bit with GPUs where we do keep on seeing the price points going down. And it does kind of seem like less and less folks are willing to go and splurge and spend money on tech on various not necessarily necessary uh, things, you know, especially with gas prices and food going up. We did go and see the market weaken throughout this quarter, so that did impact our results, said Kendra Gooden, good enough, kind of a funny name, uh, director of Microsoft Investor Relations. And in a call with The Verge, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella offered some more context on the PC market during an investor's call today. It's about a, a changing market for PCs during the quarter. We continue to see more PCs shipped than pre-pandemic and are taking share, which is at least somewhat of a nice thing as well. So at the weaker PC market, Surface is doing well. On the commercial side, Surface revenues actually increased 10% for quarter four, despite no big Surface launches during the quarter. Consumer side is definitely dropping off at a faster rate when it comes to overall demand environment right now. So we think of the commercial strength on Surface. That's good enough. We get a little bit more help on that Surface revenue number. Explains good enough. Microsoft Refresh also has compact Surface Laptop Go in June with 11th gen Intel processors. We'll be waiting until the fall until we see bigger refresh to the Surface lineup to as well. So all eyes are now on Intel's planned price increases of its CPUs and chips, and we'll kind of see how that kind of plays into also for the GPUs. So then the new AMD line and also NVIDIA lines for their upcoming price things, including their Wi-Fi and other connectivity chips. But now this is kind of the big bread and butter I'm sure a lot of you guys care about. These are myself included. Over on the Xbox side, hardware revenue actually fell 11% alongside a 6% dip in Xbox content and services revenue. Microsoft attributed the services decline to lower engagement hours and monetization across both first and third party titles. Overall gaming revenue at Microsoft actually declined 7% year over year. 
So I'd probably actually say a big reason for that, obviously, is we just have, funny enough, have not been seeing as many Xbox Series X and S's being sold. We've been still seeing them floating around, but it does kind of seem like the interest has definitely fallen down, like to the point where it's pretty much normalized and you can pretty much go into any single store and just get off the shelves and be mostly fine. Now as well, we still have that kind of somewhat big focus on the PlayStations where they people are still buying them, they're still flying off the shelves, although it is slowing down. A big thing too as well as I'm sure a lot of folks who already want an Xbox Series S have probably gotten them and there's probably going to be a few more issues too as well as like it kind of gets more and more dated as time goes on. So the decline you're seeing in Xbox hardware is partially a reflection of the fact we had a launch about two years ago, which would also make sense, you know, it can only kind of maintain that super hyper focus and hyper factors for so long. It's kind of like at some point people, it's been two years, maybe they just, if they want to get one, they probably would have got one. If they still haven't gotten one for whatever reason, you have to wait for more sales or wait for the next bigger games. And right now, it's also, especially with the PC crossover, it is a harder sell. And on top of that, too, we haven't really seen a really big game release even now still. We'll maybe want to look at the numbers in terms of Game Pass subscriptions as well as also Xbox sales when Starfield's almost done. So about two years ago, well, was when the release came out. So with the supply constraints that we've has seen over the last couple of years, it has kind of extended out that period for consoles. Is it good enough? We're still seeing some strong demand, which is good, but it's not the insane demand of things being sold out, scalpers and botters buying out stock, and going from there. But coming off those highs that we saw the last couple of years up within the launch, which is fine. That's understandable. Like the, at some point, people kind of taper off. At some point, you have to have new games. And at some point, you know, maybe a lot of folks are maybe just not doing Game Pass anymore because they just want to save money. Makes sense. So by the quarterly hardware revenue decline, Nadella says Microsoft has been the market leader in North America for three quarters in a row among next-gen consoles. I don't know if that's super, super true as well. They have done very well, but we've kind of been kind of topping off either or because we also factor in other regions, so we'll have to see. Xbox also had its best fiscal year in terms of revenue, which is at least kind of a nice thing too. It's kind of bad. Uh, bad numbers because it has gone down. Everyone likes the doom and gloom better, but it's still been doing pretty good at the end of the day. At around $16.2 billion for the entire fiscal year. So it's great for revenue. Microsoft guidance for fiscal quarter one of 2023 sees gaming revenue and Xbox content and services revenue both declining again, though, next quarter. Which I think is still fine, mainly because we still haven't had a lot of these big heavy hitters. You factor in the summertime months, maybe around the holidays we'll have a nice little bump up and that'll probably be their next report. But it is kind of intriguing to see that the Xbox is doing so poorly. Last quarter, Microsoft revealed 10 million people had used the company's Xbox Cloud gaming service. And that's bound to have grown even higher thanks to Fortnite now being the only game that's free to stream on the service. Over 4 million people have streamed Fortnite to date, including over 1 million who were new to our ecosystem, explains Nadella. Microsoft hasn't provided an update on the Xbox Game Pass subscribers, which is kind of annoying because I really would like to see those. Although I will be probably honest, we'll probably have the numbers a lot lower. We have been seeing a, lot, a higher uptick of people canceling their Xbox Game Pass. We've got a higher number of people critiquing Xbox Game Pass. And as well, uh, even they, they're mentioning these two, like they had 25 in January, but that's also after Age of Empires, Forza, and Halo. Now, Halo is definitely calmed down. No one's playing it. Forza did have its new DLC, although the numbers are probably not crazy. And also Age of Empires is way, way, way lower player base wise in general. Microsoft also is in discussing his planned $89 billion Activision of Activision, which would probably go and bolster up Xbox a lot more. More Xbox sales, you know, Diablo, Warcraft, Call of Duty, Candy Crush, and all that. Probably nicer, but at the end of the day, we'll have to go and see how it all kind of plays and flows on out. Uh, I will probably say that will probably be a huge bump up, though, in Game Pass subscribers nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, so outside of gaming windows, Microsoft Office Cloud and server products continue to do growth at impressive rates. Office commercial products and cloud services revenue is up 9%. It was kind of surprising. Still, probably just mainly still due to the pandemic and people using it, subscription based and all of that as well. And Microsoft 365 consumer subscriptions now at 60 million to as well. And also the server products too, which is in Chrome to X Cloud and other stuff, also jumped 22 percent year over year, mainly thanks to Azure. And if you guys don't know, the cloud gaming, cloud hosting has been phenomenal. Think a uh, AWS too as well, and everything on top of that. So all around, Microsoft isn't doing the worst isn't doing the best, isn't doing the worst, but Xbox has been slogging and probably will be slogging in the next few months, although I do have a lot of potential. Whenever new games do come on out, I don't think Xbox is fully 
count out as of yet. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. Check in those Howl links down below for the Samsung signups as well. Get your free money, free signups. Twitter and Twitch room down below. We have everything else down below. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching in the first place.